All right, so here's an example of a little question that I wrote up. Uh, suppose you want to drop a rock off of a ledge so that it hits the ground at 6 meters per second. How high does the ledge have to be and how long will it fall for? Uh, then I drew this picture and I realized uh, maybe I should be dropping a water balloon or something because I don't think you should be dropping rocks on people. Um, but use your imagination. Let's say it's a, let's say it's a water balloon, I guess. Um, anyways, so we know that uh, this is going to be a constant acceleration problem, right? Because we're just used to, uh, dealing with gravity as our acceleration. So we can write, uh, first of all, um, we can write a is equal to dv dt, right? We'll write a change in velocity. And remember, we'll also write that v is equal to ds dt. All right, and we do know that acceleration in this problem is going to be negative 9.81 meters per second squared. All right, uh, and the reason I say negative, because I'm assuming that I suppose that y is positive in this direction, right? So his height will be a positive value. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do our regular little tricks here uh, with a equals dv over dt. We're going to separate the variables, so we get, uh, we're going to come this way and we're going to get, uh, sorry, that's dv is equal to a dt, right? A dt. So, now we know that integral of dv is equal to all, we know acceleration, that's negative 9.81, it's a constant. And when we integrate, uh, it ends up being uh, on the left-hand side. So this is dt. Okay, cool. So then uh, the integral of dv is just v, and the integral of dt is just t. So the velocity is negative 9.81. T. And we get our integration constants, but we learned in the last video that in this situation, uh, our integration constant is actually v naught. Um, we can prove that with definite integrals, but uh, we'll just uh, skip that proof right now because we just did it in the last video. But also, we know that we're dropping the rock. We're not throwing it down with an initial velocity. It starts at zero. So we can say right away that this is going to be canceled and goes to zero. So we will have v is equal to negative 9.81t. Cool. So uh, let's uh, make our expression for uh, position now. So we have this. This is going to be one of the, uh, well, this will be very important to us in a minute. Uh, so we have, again, we have v is equal to ds dt, right? We'll do separation of variables, so we get ds is equal to v dt, v dt. Okay, so now we have, uh, we just want to integrate both sides. Um, so we can say integral of ds is equal to the integral of v, which is negative 9.81t, negative 9.81t, right, and this is dt. And again, we see negative 9.81. We can move that outside of the integration. So we get, I'll just do it down here for you guys. ds is equal to negative 9.81 integral of t dt. Okay, we're running out of space, so we're going to come up here. So integral of ds is just s. Uh, we will have the integration constant, but uh, we'll see that in two seconds. Uh, and then we have the integral of t is 1 half t squared, and this is negative 9 here. We can say negative 9.81 times 1 half uh, t squared. And again, we learned in the last video that our integration constant coming from this is actually s naught, right? And uh, I guess maybe we should have drawn some more uh, some more information on here. Let's say that this level is... Uh, zero in his height up here is s right so this would technically be s naught you know at this level and uh well yeah that's kind of confusing anyways this is his s naught height uh and then this s is equal to s is equal to zero and this position is equal to s naught this is where it starts and this is where it goes to right okay and this is just the value, like this is the y-axis. Anyways, um, sorry, I hope that didn't confuse you guys. Uh, so then what we have is, well, we can rearrange this. Anyways, getting back on track, s is equal to, this will be negative 
4.905 t squared plus s naught. And there we go. So that's going to be our other really important equation. Uh, and actually, something that we can do right here, if we really wanted to, is uh, because we, we defined as s naught is where it starts and s is where it goes to, we know that the value when it reaches the ground is equal to 0. So that is also useful to us. All right, so uh, what we can do is uh, we remember we wanted the, the water balloon, not the rock, to hit the ground or his friend or whatever at 6 meters per second. So we know that the final velocity is 6 meters per second. Uh, let's switch colors so we can uh, stay, keep on track of things. So we have 6 is equal to negative 9.81 t. So the time it takes is going to be equal to negative 6 over 9.81. All right, now I just did this on my calculator and I got uh, this is 0 0.612 seconds. Cool, so that's how long it falls for in, a, in order to gain enough velocity to hit the ground or his buddy that's at this S, the height of zero with six meters per second. So now all we need to do is uh, we wanted to solve for how high does it have to be. Well, we already know that it ends at zero, so its initial height is S naught. So what we can do is we can say that S naught is equal to, we'll move this to the other side, 4.905. And now we have the t, which is 0 0.612 seconds squared. And if you do this, you punch this into your calculator, we are going to get s naught, which is the starting height, will be 1.83 meters. So there you go. That's our uh, constant acceleration with a uh, function of time example. And I'll see you guys in the next video, and we will do another... Another example where uh, acceleration is a function of time, but now we'll have non-constant acceleration.